I was really thankful that our governor really got ahead of it at first. We were one of the more aggressive states and we actually didn't really even have a peak until sadly right now we're seeing coronavirus cases go up in our state and a lot more hospitalizations and deaths. I am support, supportive of the mass mandate. I'm a scientist and we know that it's not a magical shield, but it really does help slow the spread. And that's really what our hospitals are asking for us is to be community minded, to do our best to keep our bubbles small, wear a mask. And I'm thankful that our Cascade County health officials are supporting that. And I know, I know you're probably looking into this in this, the news station, but we are looking at, our county's looking at additional restrictions. They're not talking about closing schools right now, but we really are trying to be ahead of this and be proactive so that we can all be safe and healthy. We had an all mail ballot election for the primary and there was no instances of fraud in our state. So I am pretty supportive of all mail ballots in particular in light of coronavirus, but even before coronavirus, I'm already an absentee voter and 70 some percent of registered voters in Montana are absentee. And we historically see extremely low levels of fraud. I think there was one instance of fraud in the last decade where a man voted for his ex-wife against her wishes. Um, so it's very rare and if we need to make an effort to make sure it's as easy as possible and as safe as possible for people to vote and let their voice be heard and exercise their right. I am very much against a sales tax. I have not spoken to a single voter that's in supportive of a sales tax and so I, I would not support a sales tax in our state. This issue is tricky for me because I don't think it's a win-win kind of either way. I don't want drug rates um, usage to go up. And I don't think that we're gonna have the slam dunk of revenue that they're promising us. I think there'll be more issues than that. But at the same time, I looked at legalization in Canada and I looked at it in Colorado and Washington where we've seen it for years. And looking at everything holistically, I do believe the pros outweigh the cons and that legalizing recreational marijuana is important to help decriminalize it and make sure that people are treated fairly. And if we can get a bonus revenue from it, that's great, but I don't think we should count on it for sure as a slam dunk. And we also should realize that if we go down this route, if it gets passed this year, that we need to be ready as legislators to address the issues that will arise. It's not going to be something that's perfectly smooth and we need to be ready and to get on top of that and get ahead of problems that other areas have faced before us as a model. I know that the Affordable Care Act is definitely not perfect, um, but I have spoken to constituents that have told me that the Affordable Care Act has saved their life and saved them from medical bankruptcy. We know the Affordable Care Act provides really important protections like protections for health insurance coverage, even if you have a pre-existing health condition. And if you're younger than 26, you can stay on your parents' health care plans. These are things that are extremely popular and I know my constituents support. And until we have a good replacement for it, there's no reason we should throw it out. I'm not saying it's perfect and we should stop and, oh yes, be satisfied. Premiums are totally fine, totally affordable. That's not true. But people really do need the protections that are currently enshrined in it. And that's why I support the Affordable Care Act. Well, a lot of the voters actually, since we just brought it up, are healthcare. It's a big problem in our state. People can't afford their medications. They're having to select and choose. I've spoke to voters that ration their medicines that they purchase through prescriptions because they can't afford to fill them all. People told me their premiums are so high they can't afford it. And that's something we really can help at the legislative level. We can make more transparency, more affordable drug pricing in our state. We can work to make sure that premiums stay low as possible. And that is definitely something impacting our city. And I wanna make sure we, we really, in light of this healthcare crisis that we are dealing with, with coronavirus, people need their care. 
So we need to do as best we can to supplement and help people have access to healthcare. I believe that I'm best, the best candidate for House District 26 because I've been there. I've lived with a working class family. I've seen the struggle that families have to go through to get by. And it's important to me to come from that place of empathy and make sure that my neighbors are treated with fairness, kindness, and then most of all, given opportunities so that we don't have to stay in a cycle of poverty and that people can get ahead in our city. Thank you. Um, that was all the questions I had. And, and is there anything that you would like to say personally to voters? Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks for the time so much today. And, and my name is Helen Olevic. I'm your candidate for House District 26. And I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you.